What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Felipe Charming and if you want to transform with me, then keep on watching this video. Alright, so starting off getting ready to go to my couch. We're gonna go ahead and go in with my LA Girl Pro HD Concealer in the shade Beautiful Bronze. I just take this and pretty much line up my edges and I like to do this just to give the effect of like a freshly trimmed hairline. Cause who doesn't want a straight hairline, especially during these quarantine times. It's, it's been rough. I mean, I cut my own hair, but you know, yeah, it, it's still it's still been pretty rough. doesn't love Ari Lennox like honestly this is everything but yeah I pretty much take this and dot every single blemish that I'd like to kind of conceal out prior to my foundation it's kind of like my form of color correcting being that I do like to lay this down over all my blemishes and around my mouth and just kind of like even out my base prior to laying down my foundation just because I noticed that when I don't my finish might not be as flawless it's still flawless it may just not be as flawless but I do make sure to pat this in I do not rub kind of just pat it in and blend it into the skin I do this with the concealer everywhere that I laid it down on my face as you can see what I'm doing now yeah I just kind of like pat it in this is a very tedious process and yeah I sped it up so it looks a lot quicker but there is a lot of like blending and patting into this just to kind of get the finish that I like some people may feel like just because this isn't the most expensive concealer in the world it's not one of the best but honestly it has never steered me wrong it doesn't budge it doesn't move or anything of the sort as long as I set it correctly it does exactly what I needed to do like I always say technique is everything if you watch my channel you've heard me say that before but technique is everything don't feel like you have to splurge and you know what i mean granted there's a lot of like bs products out there but there are a lot of like bomb drugstore products don't feel like you have to splurge and spend a bag and a half to look bomb but here i am taking my cody airspun powder um i never take the puff ever but i was like honestly we're quarantining and i ain't going nowhere anyway so f it let me just take my puff directly on my face which i usually do use my sponge however i've seen people do this a couple of times which i did want to try this option out because i wanted to mute all of my skin concerns and my facial hair entirely and it did end up being the best outcome for me it did make my foundation a little bit harder to blend which is this this is the maybelline super safe foundation it did make it harder to blend which i ended up editing out contoured using my black opal foundation stick in the shade suede mocha love that foundation stick for contour and then i go ahead and i went ahead and took my nyx concealer everything's gonna be listed down below if i don't remember the shades in the video and yeah i just take that and just highlight the high points of my face using that you know the usual but you know i usually blend out my contour before i highlight but i felt like you know doing something different or whatever um but yeah yeah i left all these clips in just so you guys could see like how tedious the process of my base really is i don't know why i'm trying so hard to get demonetized with all these um music clips but uh yeah i love 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 blending out my contour it's like the most therapeutic thing in the world i don't know what that's about but for some reason once i start to blend once i get to blending out that contour it's just like, it's just therapy for me. I really love doing makeup. Uh, I was pointing out my skin concerns and like, you know, thumbing it down. We don't live for those, but those are being taken care of nonetheless. I was just really hyped because this is my first time like really doing my makeup in a, like in a little while. My aspiration in life would be to be happy. Speaking of being happy, like, I don't know about everyone else, but this whole quarantine, like this whole quarantine, and you know, I don't want to use certain words because I don't want to get, you know, my video taken down. This whole quarantine madness and the climate of everything that's been going on has been like, you know, just uh, bringing up a whole lot of emotions and stuff. And uh, yeah, my I wanted to do my makeup just because I feel like I needed that escape. And I wanted to film the process and share it with everybody just because I feel like everyone else could use the escape as well, so why not? But we're all, you know, figuring this whole thing out. 
But yeah, I just took my beauty blender, or sorry, my Real Techniques beauty sponge and just blended out my concealer. Even at this point, I was still a little apprehensive, but the process was starting to come together. Like, as flawless as my skin looks, it's really just not, it's not giving me that in person right now. But luckily, even through everything that's going on, I've been, I was able to go ahead and get what I needed to get uh, to take care of that. But yeah, I, I just pretty much beat my face literally with my real technique sponge and yes the sponge was soaked or dampened i know a lot of people like debate whether or not these sponges are supposed to be dry girl would never blend my face with a dry sponge ever in life i did go back and add a little bit of contour and blend that out just because i wanted to add more warmth and i wanted like my bronze contour moment to be like really deep and dramatic at least for me i was really loving how this was coming out no cap Sorry for the fancy mirror constantly getting in the way. Once when I'm in the zone, like I yeah yeah. But I just take take the brush and kind of just add the excess to kind of contour the center of my face, like my nose. But it's just like a very soft bronze moment. Like as you can see, my nose isn't really contoured. I mostly carve my nose out using powder. It just works better and lasts longer that way for me. And I just go back and kind of like you know just make sure everything's blended out. And then I went ahead and added just a little bit more concealer just for a little extra coverage because I really wanted my look to just be like locked in place because I've gotten to the point where the, during during this little quarantine, i um, just been looking dusty, walking around the house, afro flattened, you know, just not the most aesthetically pleasing, you know, moment. I just take a little bit of setting, took a little bit of setting powder and blended that in. I just kind of do that to alleviate from any creasing or anything of the sort. I just press it in first and then, you know, if I want to bake after, I'll bake on top, but I always press it in first. Sorry, this is Cody Airspun setting powder, by the way. I take the same Cody Airspun setting powder and just carve out my cheekbones just to make the contour kind of pop a little bit more. Adding setting powder everywhere. That is even thinking about creasing, possibly. I just wanted to kind of bake a little bit more. And then I did go back and start my brows. And while I was doing my brows, I noticed that I raised my eyebrows up a lot. So I did reset my uh, frown line um, above my brow. I think that's what you call them. I don't know what they're called. Above my brows. Um, the lines on my forehead. But yeah, I started doing my, I wanted to try doing my brows after foundation and stuff again, just to see, you know, what they was hitting for. And they came out, like, really, really bomb. If you guys want, like, a detailed brow routine, I'll be sure to let you know, but I do take the micro blade pencil, micro, I think it's micro blade pencil from NYX Cosmetics, and yeah, I just kind of, like, draw my eyebrow out and then I blend it out using some Makeup Geek eyeshadow. Um, I have been using eyeshadow on my brows for like the past maybe what ever since I got this palette like six months or so because Kiss and Y stopped making the brow palette that I loved oh so much so I just started to like kind of eyeball eyeshadow that I had already and it worked just as well so I didn't feel the need to reinvest in a brow powder so i'm just gonna be doing this until i find like the beyonce of brow powders <laughs> but this has been hitting it's been getting the job done like i just lay down a brown shadow and then i use like a deeper brown in my arches and stuff to kind of define it and just kind of you know just finesse that until it, i get it to the point of my liking and after I do that, I take my concealer, the same NYX concealer that I used to highlight to carve out my entire brow. A lot of people talk about the whole halo eyebrow effect issue, but for me personally, the skin around my brow naturally is lighter. So I kind of just go based on the color scheme that my face already provides versus going with what everyone talks about. I go, go with what my skin is telling me versus what everyone else is telling me um which to me makes perfect sense so that's just what i do it works for me and plus this is more like uh 
a nighttime kind of an eye uh, makeup look moment, so I did want my brows to pop. Sometimes I will take a, a brow that's like a, a concealer that's closer to my skin complexion and outline the most of my brow using that, and then I'll just use the highlighter color in my arch. But I kind of prefer this method. My brows just look phenomenal. It's been a while since I've had this bomb of a brow. When I tell you I'm never going back to doing my brows first, I'm never going back to doing my brows first. Like, unless I'm doing like a no makeup makeup look. But outside of that, if I'm doing a full face, I'm always, always, always going to do my brows first. <laughs> it just looks so much better. Like, do you see them? Do you see them? Do you see them? Do you see them? Like, girl, come on, man. Come on, man, tighten up. But my brows usually take forever. That's why 90% of the time I will skip them. But like I said, if you guys want a brow routine, let me know so I can, you know, oblige. But yeah, this is pretty much what I do. But if you want like a dedicated brow routine where I'm up close to my brow, let me know. Then I take the compressed gel powder contour thing from the Shiny Pretty Things face palette by mac love 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 this for contour it looks so good it's not even funny like i just love carving my face with contour so much like i just i just love it something about it it's just so satisfying um and i know this looks really harsh but it, we're gonna like you know do blush and stuff on top of this just to kind of soften everything up but I think I did that after I did my eye yeah but I just sat there and went in with my bronzer contour for like a minute as you can see <laughs> and I did go ahead and take the same bronzer contour in the palette to go ahead and carve out my nose take in positive things that fuel your mind to be elevated and lifted do that Watch those types of films, listen to that type of music, talk to those type of people, because- Do that type of makeup. <laughs> I'm so annoying. I'm sorry y'all had to witness that. But um, as I'm contouring my nose, I did do my little Cupid's bow moment with the same bronzer. I like to carve out my Cupid's bow with a little detailer brush. I did dust in some of that setting powder just because I don't like when it settles for too long. Then I did go ahead and use the shade, I think it's the shade Dollywood in the MAC Art Library eyeshadow palette. Love this palette. This was a, another one of the palettes that was sent to me in my birthday bundle by my good friend Juve. Shout out to my twin. And I was just, I like to prep my eye for like the more vibrant colors. So I do kind of just like to warm up my eyelid, just to kind of give it like an organic, neutral, natural, subtle, pretty wearable transition moment for my eye before the vibrant color. A podcast, a podcast network. Come on. <clears throat> I play way too much. I did start to take the shade and bark just to kind of deepen up my crease. Like I said, just kind of add to that warm transition vibe that I was trying to go for before I went in with the blue shadow. I'm really, it's just like a personal preference thing. I'm really just into like super soft and subtle, wearable, like classic timeless, effortless looking makeup. Not necessarily effortless looking, but just wearable, really blended out, just kind of, you know, a sun kiss kind of a makeup look. Uh, but yeah, I did go ahead and dip into the Makeup Geek eyeshadow palette using the shade Seize the Day. And I just kind of took that and blew that paused. Took that and put it all over my lid before adding the shade over that. I took the shade time travel like directly on my lid, which kind of just gave me like, you know, the look I was kind of going for as far as like a, a blue smoky eye kind of a moment, which is high key fitting my vibe as far as like my makeup style right now. Um, I just like to do makeup looks that I feel like look good on me. Um, which I feel like the only time she was doing makeup. But I, I, yeah, I just like to do makeup that looks good on me. I like to do makeup that I feel like I can wear. I don't like to do makeup that I feel like wears me. And it's simple and as crazy as that sounds, it, you know, it, 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 it took me some time for me to kind of figure out and accept that that was my makeup style. But yeah, it just kept adding some blue, kept deepening 
my crease and just kept, you know, pretty much finessing this eye until I got it to what I wanted it to be. The emotional transformation was so... <laughs> the things I find in editing. Right now, as you can see, I'm adding blush at the edge of my contour, where I laid that contour bronzer down before. And this is a uh, Chivalry by Makeup Geek. It is included in like a trio. Um, and then I'm taking this, the highlighter from that same palette called Ablaze, and I'm just kind of taking a little eyeshadow crease brush and adding my highlighter using that. I just find that it works a little bit better than my highlighter brush. When I do it like this, I just like slowly kept building the highlighter up and up and up until I got it to where I wanted to be. I did use the same brush to highlight highlight my nose and over my eye and stuff. But like I said, I just kept going back and kept adding this in. And I did layer my highlight. I'm not sure chronologically when that happened. But oh yeah, I layered my highlighter. Here I was adding... The highlighter shade from the um, Shiny Pretty Things Face Compact by MAC. And I did take that same highlighter from there and use that in on my, uh, my brow bone, my cupid's bow, my nose, just to kind of add some detailed highlight. I used this pencil slash detailer brush and just added like detailed highlighter to my face and then I did take my clean highlighter brush just to kind of help blend out that highlighter just to make sure that there were no rough edges or anything of the sort and then I did go back um, after highlighting I did go back in with the blush from the same um, MAC shiny pretty things face compact um, I just like the way these trios work and I did like to layer up and double up on my blush and my highlighter um, and I did go back and add some more of that contour bronzer from the same palette because I felt like my nose was getting lost in the mix and then I went back and kind of just added some face powder to the areas I do necessary which would be like you know the sides of my nose um, on my cheek everywhere that I pretty much was baking and highlighting um, yeah and then I just took some setting spray and fanned my face dry <laughs> After fanning my face, I did go in with mascara. I did edit a lot of this out only because it's mascara. I took that same mascara and put it on my brows. If you haven't seen me before, seen my channel, seen me do this before, yeah, I do like to coat my brows with a little bit of mascara just because my hair is black and I like everything to kind of look natural and just, you know, one and the same. So, I'm scared because I'm about to try my hand in a glossy lid. Now, if this is a fail, I'm gonna be so pressed. So I have a dilemma, I have two glosses. NC Gloss has like, has some color to it. And then the Ruby Kisses one looks like it could work, but because my eyes are hooded, I'm scared. I think I wanna try the Ruby Kisses gloss. Dearly Father, please don't let me have spent the last hour and a half on this makeup only for this glossy lid to ruin my work. In Jesus' name I pray, in the blood of Christ, amen. Ooh. I'm actually extremely satisfied with that. So as you guys can see, I was adding, successfully adding the Ruby Kisses lip gloss to my eyelid and it was giving me the look that I wanted. Yeah, so I was happy about that. I didn't want to add any eyelashes because I feel like that would have taken away from the glossy lid, at least while I was doing it for the first time. I did go back and touch up and do like some, like blend out the, the gloss a little bit. Um, to get it to where I like, but that's pretty much all I did. I was really happy with how this came out, like really, really happy. Shout out to you if you made it this far in the video. Y'all are the realest. And I forgot to like really style my hair, but that's all right. I just did my little makeup combo. 
not my makeup combo, my little lip combo, you know, Mac Derriere at the base. And then I took this new lip, this new uh, uh, lipstick that Juve sent me, Forbidden Romance, and kind of popped it on top. Then I added some Fenty Glow on the very top of my lipstick just so that I don't destroy it. But yeah, longevity wise, this is the finished look. I hope you guys enjoyed this video while you're in quarantine. So I'm all dialed up to get to the couch. Y'all, please be safe out there. Be sure to follow me on all my social media. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Love you for watching. Peace.